Hello, in this video, we'll cover the basic setup for installing and configuring an Express based app. We'll discuss the dash G flag for global installation versus installing Express locally. We'll take a look at what an auto generated app looks like when using the Express command. We'll take a first look at Jade, which is a templating engine and included in an Express scaffold and we'll introduce the concept of middleware before digging deeper into middleware in a later video. Okay, so as mentioned in this video, all we're going to do is install Express globally and then take a look at the initial scaffold that Express gives us. So make sure that you have the latest download of Express installed. I'm using Windows 8.1 on 64-bit version so make sure that you go to node.js and download whichever version of node works for you all right so once you have node installed we'll start off by installing express Go globally we can just say npm install dash g express the difference between using the dash g flag and not using the the dash g flag it will basically allow us to scaffold an express app by simply putting express into the node terminal. Typically when we're installing packages, we'll use the dash dash save flag. I'm going to navigate now to a folder that I created for this course called starter app. And I will download a initial express web app using the command express. So you can see it created a bunch of files really quick. So we'll take a look at each of these. Notice at the end it says CD and NPM install. So essentially it's saying once we're in our folder we should type the command NPM install which would download the modules that we need. So upon creating our express initial scaffold it gives us a package.json which specifies certain express packages that we'll need to download in order to actually run our app. So upon entering npm install in our current folder location, it will download Express, Body Parser, Cookie Parser, Morgan, Sur Favicon, Debug and Jade into a Node Modules folder. Okay, so we'll do that now. Our app.js file is the main entry point for starting our application. We'll go into each of these more in depth as the course goes on, but basically at the top here, we create a variable and require the express package. So we're able to require packages by just using the name of the package as it's defined in our package.json. So anytime that we see a require without any dots or dashes, Node will automatically look in our Node modules folder. So after installing these modules, meaning after I do npm install and it downloads everything, Node will automatically create a Node modules folder for everything that we've downloaded. And then we can simply require any of these by defining a variable and then requiring it into our app. These, of course, are just variables. We can name these anything. Instead of saying express, I could just say press. But typically, we'll use camel casing for the name of the package that we're using. All these packages contain modules that, in turn, contain their own JavaScript methods. So you can think of them a lot like underscore or jQuery. So jQuery and underscore have their own methods that they use that allows developers to easily handle JavaScript patterns. So after uh, requiring Express, we set Express to app. And after declaring app, we see various methods that have been attached to app, like set and use. Here we see get. As mentioned, there's a listen method that will start a server. When we scaffold an app with Express, it allows us to start our server using npm start. 
and you'll be able to see this in the package.json so how express likes to scaffold our apps for us is it provides a script that in order to start our server it looks into the bin slash www file so if we were to open that file up we can see that this file ends up using the app.listen method that I alluded to earlier in order to start our server. So now that we've installed the node modules, we can type into the terminal npm start and it will load up our server. First it looks in the bin ww file and it should give us a message once it's loaded up our server. So this actually won't give us any message once our server has started because there's no log for it. So you could say console log express. Okay, so we can just add a very basic message to let us know that express has started and we can go to, should be port 3000. Okay, and we get a mes uh, welcome message saying welcome to express and this is just a very basic message that's based on our jade view engine but express essentially ships with jade so let's take a look at what jade looks like jade is basically a, a very trimmed down version of HTML. I personally don't really like Jade because if you don't have your spacing correct, then it throws errors. And if things aren't centered on the correct line, it will show up in weird places on your layout. And we can see on our index, it says extends layout. So it uses layout in the index page. And we'll take a look at this where it's setting a variable of title. Again, we'll go into this more detail, but it's setting our routes to be to use route slash index. And it's setting this route slash index at the index location. Users is set to dash users. So routes. We'll have our index and our users.js. So users. So if we go to localhost slash users, it should we should get the message respond with the resource. If I do slash users, okay, we get respond with the resource. And just to show you how this works. If I change this to test on my server restart, if I go to dash users dash test, I will get respond with the resource. So I'll have to restart this. So this route should no longer work and we get a not found. But if we go to users slash test, I get my respond with the resource. This gives us an example of how we can pass variables. So when we navigate to our front page, we see welcome to express and we're setting the title variable to express in our routes file. OK, so that concludes just a very basic introductory level lesson on what express is and how we create an initial scaffold. And then following videos, we'll be building our own Express app and learning what each one of these app.use and app.sets actually does.